Hi y'all and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I, I can't, oh, I don't even know where to start. I don't even know where to start guys because literally just this, this past weekend, I had a really, really big trip. I went to Australia, I went to visit my friends and topic of today's video, I also got to see the new Transformers 1 film and guys, oh my God. <laughs> The film was absolutely spectacular, in my opinion. Absolutely spectacular. And I think the best Transformers movie that we have ever fucking had. Oh my god. And so before I start my rambling and babbling, because I will go on forever about this movie, I will not stop. Here is just a preface and content warning. Of course, there are going to be spoilers in this video, in this review of sorts. I will, however, have two separate sections of this video. The first section is going to be a as spoiler free as possible review of Transformers 1, kind of what's it about, what I thought of it. I will include the time mark here on screen so that you know when to exit the video if you have not seen Transformers 1 yet. I so highly recommend that you do go and see this in theaters. Please, 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 please go see this in theaters. It is so worth the watch. And the next section will be a completely spoilered review of Transformers 1. No holds bar. I'm going to be talking about everything in this movie because it's all so good. Again, I'm going to tell y'all how much I love this movie. I really am. Just, ah. Now, please remember that if you go and watch the spoilered review for this video or if you have seen the movie and you are interacting in the comment sections with others please try to keep the comments as spoiler free as possible or please make sure to put a spoiler warning on your comments that will have spoilers since this is a very new film I do want to be respectful for those who have not seen the film and again I believe people should go and see this film absolutely please go and see this film <laughs> and please if you are going to post spoilers on somewhere like social media please remember to spoiler warning your post before the content that is spoilered comes up. There have been so many posts that I've seen on TikTok especially that have not had spoiler warnings on them that are just posting scenes of the movie and it's really disheartening because I'm I'm so sure so many people have already been spoiled for this movie and it's really sad. So please remember, be absolutely gratuitous with your spoiler warnings or don't talk about spoilers or go see the movie. Absolutely go see the movie. It's so much fun. Just wanted to say that beforehand. So, without further ado, let's get into the spoiler-free review for Transformers 1. So I just literally, as I'm recording this right now, as I got home, I have just finished my second viewing of Transformers 1. As I said, I went to Australia this past weekend to visit friends. I went to the Oz Comic Con, which was really fun. Me and my friends all dressed up as Decepticons and it was just a really cool time. And not to get too off topic right now, but we met a lot of other Transformers fans who also had seen the movie and loved the movie. And we were all so happy to meet one fellow Transformers fans because we're honestly really hard to find in the wild. <laughs> Especially at comic conventions, I find there's just not usually that many Transformers fans and it's kind of sad, but there were so many at this convention and me and, and all my friends, as I said, were all really, really happy about that. And I really hope that Transformers 1 will bring in more fans to the fan base because it Transformers 1, I feel is the perfect movie to do that. But me and my friends all went to see Transformers 1 on the day it released in theaters in Australia, September 20th. Oh, oh my God. Oh my God, guys. Again, I'm trying to be spoiler free, but there were so many points in time during this movie where I was genuinely like surprised, gasping and just, <gasps> <gasps> just, oh my God. God. <laughs> the characterization in this movie of Orion Pax, D16, Alita, Bumblebee, surprisingly, even though I know I said in my initial uh, video about the trailer for TF1, even though I said Bumblebee was going to be a very insufferable character, in my opinion to me, Bumblebee wound up being quite likable, honestly, in this film. Quite likable. Again, without spoilers, wound up being a quite endearing character and honestly a pretty entertaining and fairly funny character in, in spite of the style of humor which I was really, really happy that I vibed with that and gelled with that. But as I said, even the characterizations of Orion Pax, D16, Alita mm, falls a little bit flat 
to me. Hey guys, it's Future Jax here. So this is like after the time period that I recorded this and after I've like seen the movie a few more times and after I've talked to like some friends a little more about this. And I have a few amendments to make about some of the stuff I said in this review at the time of like recording these and still like thinking through some of my thought processes and everything. Now, the first amendment that I wanna make here because I do make some comments here and there throughout this review that I haven't taken out and that's for a purpose, but there are some other comments that I've taken out because I'm like, oh, these were genuinely just bad takes, trash takes, really bad. And it was honestly me trying to find a way to like figure out how to word my thoughts together, which is why they were so bad. But it specifically, I made a few comments about Alita and not liking her character or feeling that her character was much more underdeveloped than the male leads, like Bumblebee and Orion and D16 in the film. However, that is what I want to amend. As I posted a TikTok video a bit back, which not really anyone saw. However, I do still want to make this known as th this is a fault of my own. I'm taking accountability and it was a bad take and it possibly fell in line with some very misogynistic views that I did not intend for that to be what my take was about it was more so trying to be it was me trying to find a way to word why exactly I am not huge on Alita's character in this movie and what spurned that TikTok video on was an IGN review because IGN has reviewed this movie and it wasn't a good review. It was a really, really ass review, to be honest. <laughs> However, there was one big talking point in that review that I found myself kind of aligning with, and that was this person's take on Alita in the film. And the basics of what that author said about Alita is that she's a very shallow character who is simply only girl boss, is her only defining personality trait. And initially, I did agree with that because yes, on the surface, that is what Alita seems to appear as in this movie. And this is where I make my amendment and say that, oh my God, actually I was wrong and I apologize for that because, and this is a theme that you will see in TF1, TF1 is a lot more subtle with a lot of the things that it does with its characters, including Alita. And since this is in the spoiler free section, I am going to try and keep this as spoiler free as possible because I think this is the best place to put this particular bit in about Alita. A lot of the character choices that are made in this movie and how they show the character arcs and journeys for these characters, especially the likes of Orion Pax and D16, are done very subtly. And we also see that in characters like Alita as well, which is something that I failed to notice and that's on me. For example, I thought Alita was very one note and girl bossy, but when you actually, you know, when you watch the film and you come across this one scene, again, trying to be a spoiler free as possible. You, you come across this one scene eventually towards the end where she has a sort of pep talk with Orion and we do get to see more than just girl boss from her in this moment and I feel that's very important to her character and giving her more depth than what it appears initially. Because the thing about Alita throughout continuities is that while I do think more modern versions of her have leaned into a more like girl bossy tropes, the thing that has been consistent with Alita is that she has always been very kind and gentle and caring no matter what the rest of her personality is like. She genuinely cares for her friends. She cares about Optimus and that is what is most important to her are her friends and her family. Which is something that I initially didn't see in TF1, all I was seeing was girl boss. I, I didn't see anything further than girl boss initially, and that's on me for not analyzing that enough. But we do actually get to see that personality trait come out in a scene like that. Again, things are done very subtly in TF1, and that is the specific scene that I do want to point to to defend my point here. And the reason that I think I aligned with this review and that particular take on Alita is, is because one, I do believe that the marketing for TF1 is kind of leaning into the fact that she is a quote unquote girl boss 
character, whether that's because she is literally a girl who is a boss or because she falls into that kind of character trope that some female characters tend to fall into. Personally, I don't want that to be the only thing that defines Alita. I don't want Alita to only be defined by girl boss. That shouldn't be the only thing that she should be. It doesn't mean that she's a bad character. It's just my personal opinion on where I would prefer her character to be taken. And I know that people will love Alita no matter what. It doesn't matter whether she's kind of a stereotypical girl boss tropey character or not. I'm not saying you can't like Alita here, but it's another testament to kind of I feel how bad the marketing has been for TF1. I hate how reductive they have made a lot of the moments in this film, again like in the trailer with the very MCU style humor that was not good and was not at all presented well in the trailer, and I, I fear that the same thing is happening to Alita in some of the campaign marketing, which I believe fed into my initial thought of, oh yeah, that is all Alita is in this movie. However, and this is another amendment that I want to make, is that while Alita is fairly one note in this film, so is Bumblebee in this film. He is very one note. He's basically just comedic relief. That's really all Bumblebee is there for. He doesn't really have too much of a purpose as far as I've like analyzed of this film. Again, however, that's up to change, just like what happened with Alita. So it's not fair of me to say whether Alita is a badly made character when Bumblebee has the same kind of character arc and character traits as Alita as far as being one note. Additionally, this is the film that is the origin for Optimus and Megatron. It is not necessarily about any of these other characters. So some characters just aren't going to be as fleshed out or gone into as in depth as something like Orion Pax in D16. That's not the point of the film. And that was unfair of me to hold that upon one of the sole female characters in this film, especially our main female lead, Alita One, which is the big amendment that I wanted to make here. And I did again want to apologize for that. Whether again, even though my intentions were good, it wound up aligning with kind of misogynistic points that I do not want to fall into and I just want to take accountability for and say that I have thought about this more, I've come back and I've thought about this and this now makes more sense. And I have found a way to actually express my thoughts that I have about Alita as a character. But that was my main amendment that I wanted to come in here and just say, put that out there. Again, like I said, there are things that I recorded that I have taken out because again, they were trash takes, but there are some of those takes that I have kept in due to, they, they lead on to other talking points where, you know, the transition from one talking point to another wouldn't make sense without it. That's the only reason for keeping some of those things in. And of course, I have to thank my mutual curious over on TikTok coming into that comment section on that particular TikTok video that I made that I have now taken taken off of my TikTok and who came in and explained a lot of the points that I made here in this review and I am mirroring basically a lot of what they have said about Alita, about her character, how that relates with the other male leads and everything. So big shout out to them for opening my mind up and for helping me to find a way to verbalize my thoughts on Alita 1. I will be popping in again towards the end of the video with my second aman big amendment that I wanted to make. So you will hear from me in a little while, but I think you've got like at least half an hour till you get there. So, uh, good luck. I hope you enjoy the rest of the rambling. Yippee! <laughs> but D16 and Orion were two of the best written characters in this film, hands freaking down. Oh my god. I adored them. I loved their camaraderie throughout this film. I loved to watch their character journeys growing from their original selves as Orion and D16 all the way to Megatron and Optimus Prime. Absolutely gorgeous character journey, character arcs that they had. Gorgeous. And as I said, very similarly with Bumblebee, the humor in this film was actually quite funny and entertaining. It, it all kind of vibed pretty well with the rest of the film and even genuinely made me laugh at like a lot of points, like a lot of points. And even with the, the badass Citron joke, even that one got me. Even that one got me. And and people who have seen the film will also know the Bad Acetron scene that I'm I'm talking about specifically. That that was oh man, this film is like genuinely hilarious. 
but on top of being genuinely hilarious, it is also just genuinely well written. I really liked the pacing. There were moments where it did get a little bit tad slow, but that was due to like, it needed to be slow due to like what was happening in those scenes. And then the rest of the movie was so gorgeously paced in my opinion. There, there weren't too many moments like that, as I said, where I kind of felt a little bit bored. It all really kept going and kept the pace up. And I really, really loved that. The sound design and the music, oh, mm, oh my God. The, the music was gorgeous. The score was gorgeous. And I believe the score was gorgeous because they got, I think the same dude who did the TFP soundtrack on this movie, Brian Taylor, I believe is his name. Phenomenal score, phenomenal score. There were so many times where I genuinely got chills because of the music that started to play and because of how epic and cinematic it was just, gorgeous gorgeous score absolutely gorgeous score and the animation oh my god okay so remember how i said in the trailer review for tf1 that i was really scared that this film was going to be desaturated and how i don't like to see that in transformers film because the thing about transformers is that it needs to have its color because that's what transformers has always been it's always been very bright very colorful guess what guess what it was it was it was so colorful and vibrant and everything popped and it was so Stunning. The animation is stunning. I think that my favorite thing out of the animation though, in spite of how just stunningly gorgeous this movie was, was actually the facial animations, which I will be talking about more in depth in the spoilered review. But the facial animations were my favorite and they just conveyed so many emotions on these characters without having to say any words. And I, I adored that. God bless our animators. Oh my God. So I think like those are like a majority of the pros that I can give spoiler free of this movie. Now here's the cons. Now, in spite that I do still have some problems with this movie, because despite that I do think this is a absolutely gorgeous movie and a really well done movie, it's not a perfect movie. And that's okay because I feel like the movie that we got, uh, even with the cons that it has, the pros very massively outweigh those cons. So personally for me, this kind of stuff didn't really bother me all that much because the rest of the movie was just so good and so much fun. <laughs> another thing about this movie this is a fun movie tf1 is a genuinely fun movie like there there is always something really fun really cool happening on screen or a really cool reveal or cool moments or scenery that just makes this movie fun to watch i also highly recommend that if you're new to transformers as well that tf1 is also a really good movie for that too tf1 again without giving spoilers but just vaguely saying like the lore and everything that is in here and the information that's in this film is all very palpable, very digestible. And I feel like even new Transformers fans or people who have never really seen Transformers before would still be able to like grip and understand this movie in spite of some concepts that are in it that might be slightly hard to grasp for someone who's never seen Transformers. I still think this is a really good stepping off point for newer fans, which is why I really hope that new, new people and new fans will come into the fan base through this movie because it truly does all of that work in one movie just oh my gosh definitely a movie that you can see with your family with uh your kids uh with your parents whoever you want to bring with your friends absolutely bring anyone and everyone along to this movie oh my gosh another thing that i also want to mention which i'm really sad about because uh my friend told me this because she was looking up how well tf1 was doing in the box office currently and because tf1 is has released the same time as the new beetlejuice movie it's not doing great which is really Really sad to see because I feel like this film deserves to have a completely sold out theater. God, it absolutely deserves to have its moment. You can tell that so much love and care and heart was poured into this film from how like good and fun it is from the characterizations to the style of humor to the gorgeous animation to the stunning visuals, just the score. Oh my God. Please, please, please get you and your friends or family to go and see this movie. Absolutely sell these tickets out. I, I need a sequel to this film. Please, please, I need a sequel to this film. It was so good. <laughs> 
please give this movie the love it deserves from the people who made this movie, who love this movie, who love this series. Make sure that we show them our appreciation for this film by going to see it in theaters. Now, in spite that TF1 isn't doing great financially at the box office, critically, it has been very highly praised so far. I believe the Rotten Tomatoes score as so far is something like 98% for the audience score and like 80 some odd percent for the critical score, which I think are the perfect scores for this movie. I, I think that's absolutely understandable and and I agree with those scores because again, it's not a perfect movie, but God, it's a good movie. It is a genuinely good movie. You can tell it's well made. It's this is the Transformers movie that I, as a fan, have been wanting for years at this point. Years. And we finally got it. It's amazing. I, I literally sat in the theaters the, the two times that I've seen it now I, crying. I have sat in the theater crying. God, it's so good. Please, please, please go and see this movie. <laughs> the mega content that is in this movie. Oh! Oh my god! Oh my oh my god, guys. We Megop fans are so well fed with this movie. Absolutely eating this movie. If you like Megop as a ship or you just like seeing Megatron Optimus content, whether that's them more so platonically or as a friendship or whatever, this is the movie. This is your movie. This is our movie. It's ah uh, I can't give spoilers, but there's a lot of content. <laughs> Again, like I said. This is the Transformers movie that I've been waiting for, for years. This is the dynamic that I've been waiting for for years. Oh my god. <laughs> Seeing the Decepticons was so much fun. Me and my friend Rexy uh, on TikTok, we we both were like grabbing each other when Starscream appeared. Just, it was amazing. It was amazing. Now, I think that that's all I can really say without spoiling the rest of the movie with what else I want to say about it. So here is your warning for the spoilered part of this review. Click off now. Again, please go watch this movie. Please go show it some love, show it support. I desperately want a sequel. <laughs> Holy shit, guys, what do we think about that final scene with Megatron and Optimus where D16 catches him as he falls? Oh my god! Oh my god! The silence that was in the theater when we saw this movie, the silence and the gasps that we heard and that we made during that scene. Oh my god. God. <laughs> There, there were so many points exactly like that scene where, again, me and my friends were all genuinely surprised or were blown away. Like, th the scene, just, I don't think any of us were expecting D16 to actually shoot Orion. I don't think any of us were actually expecting him to do that. But personally, I'm so glad that that happened because that's literally, it, it was one of those things where like, I don't know how they're going to get across D16 and Orion Pax falling out here because you know at the start of the film they're both extremely close you can tell and they're 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 best friends d16 literally says that himself you're my best friend i need to get a new best friend i i was very curious to see how exactly they were going to make that work and i think personally that they did it in the best way possible because this makes megatron a like it, it makes one it, while he is an understandable villain to some extent it makes sense why they are now rivals, why they are now enemies now, because one, he, even though he didn't mean to, which kills me inside, even though he didn't mean to shoot him, he did. And and I love that you can see, and this is going back to the, the, the facial expressions that I love in this movie, the D16's facials show his character journey more than his words ever could. I absolutely adore D16's facial animations and e even Orion has some wonderful facial animations himself like the the scene where D16 has just usurped Starscream and it's like kind of that slow-mo shot where Orion is getting overwhelmed by the Decepticons as they all crowd around or well I should say the high guard they're not Decepticons at this point in the movie <laughs> but where he's surrounded by the high command and we see D16 turning as his eyes glow orange and they turn from yellow to orange and uh, Orion's face, you can see everything 
on his face, the, the emotional beats that he is going through, the emotional journey that he's going through as he's realizing this about D16, as he's realizing what D16 is becoming. Just, oh my God. And we see it on D16's face again. We see that kind of similar emotional journey in the scene where he shoots Orion. God. <laughs> The, the anger to the shock, to the surprise, to the regret. God, oh my God, oh my God. I'm gonna need another counter for how many times I say, oh my God, in this video. Just, just watch, it's gonna, I'm gonna say it like a hundred times easily. Just, oh my God. <laughs> absolutely tragic and that that's the only way that I could see that this makeup breakup happening that was the only way I could see it happen where there was something whether it was on purpose or accidental this is what needed to happen to make this dynamic work to break how close Optimus and Megatron once were I feel this is the only way that this could have happened and it was so perfect also interesting little tidbit about me but I actually have an AU because like in my head it's not really a thing that's ever going to become like a proper like made thing it's just like an AU that I have in my head for my own shits and giggles but funnily enough back in 2021 I made an art piece with Orion actually getting blown up by Megatronus in, in TFP. I have had that headcanon for years and to see that carried out for real in an official movie, I'm so glad I wasn't the only one with this idea because again, it's the only way that I can see these two truly like breaking other than if you do something like the council scene where Orion becomes prime and you know, Megatronus actually wanted the primacy and da 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 showing his true colors. As, as much as I do also love that interpretation of their characters this one just god it hit it hit so well so so well oh my god and getting back to the scene where he shoots him but I, I like again the facial animations are gorgeous and then when Orion is falling as he is falling one final time D16 catches him saves him one final fucking time hearing him in theaters as he whispers to himself no 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 god oh my god oh my god as he realizes what he has just done he just shot his best friend and again we see his emotional journey on his face he doesn't have to say words for us the audience to understand what he is going through because we see on his face as he's holding Orion from the ledge there as he is holding him we see him cycle through shock we see him cycle through sadness we see him cycle through guilt we see him return to frustration and anger god and that's all done with facial animation beautiful beautiful oh my god and of course another little detail that i really really loved for d16 slash megatron in this film was slowly seeing his eyes turn red throughout this film going from yellow to a light orange to deep orange to nearly red once he finally makes his choice of i'm not saving you anymore is when his eyes turn the true red oh my god the fact that his whole character journey can be seen in his eyes just i i don't have words i don't have words to describe how gorgeous that is absolutely gorgeous like easily i already know that d16 is th this tf1 d16 is one of my favorite versions of d16 slash megatron if not now my favorite because of the way his character journey is written and how he falls to become Megatron. Oh! And this is a comment I saw that I think like on TikTok or something or somebody made a video about it on TikTok, but the metaphorical fall of Megatron as Orion is literally falling, but metaphorically Orion is rising and metaphorically Megatron is falling, but he is literally rising. Oh my God, there's a lot of like kind of sub subtext like that and symbolism in this film that I absolutely adore. There's a lot of parallels in this film. This film does parallels so fucking well, especially between what D16 was versus what he is becoming, becoming the new sentinel.
intentional. Jesus H Christ. Oh my God. <laughs> when I first saw this scene in theaters, literally me and all of my friends, as soon as Orion jumped in the way to protect Sentinel and D16 shot him, we all gasped out loud. None of us were expecting it. None of us were expecting it. Like. It's one of those things where you expect like, yeah, you know, we know that Orion and D16 going into this are going to have a falling out. Like us Transformers fans know that that's what's going to happen. We don't know how it's going to happen, but that is what's going to happen. They're going to become enemies. Oh, and still, and still, even with us seasoned fans, it surprised us. It shocked us. That's how you make a good fucking movie. That's how you know it's good when it still genuinely surprises you even if you know what's going to happen. Literally that entire scene up until Orion becomes Optimus, me and my friends were all just staring agape at the screen in awe. I was nearly in tears that entire time. Just God, an amazing scene. And it feels epic. It feels epic. Even, even if you're not someone like me who's like a mega fan and I ship it, but like even if you just like Transformers because you like epic journeys. This is an epic scene because we get to see Orion truly be chosen by Primus and become Optimus Prime, be dubbed with the Matrix. And oh, it's an amazing scene. It's so epic. And I'm not the biggest Optimus Prime girly. I'm not the biggest Orion Pax girly, but I still thought that was amazing. And I loved being able to see Orion become the true leader that he will be Optimus Prime. God, God. <laughs> it was such a perfect way to show Orion becoming Optimus Prime, a perfect way to show D16 becoming Megatron. It was a perfect rise and fall, absolutely perfect gorgeous parallels absolutely gorgeous one thing that i also really loved about this scene as well is that the action of d16 taking sentinel's tcog and using that to make himself megatron dubbing himself megatron is also like a parallel between what alpha trion says at the start of the movie where a transformer is not defined by what they can transform into or by their tcog but by the spark in their chest and Yet, Megatron is defined by his TCOG. D16 became Megatron because of Megatronus's TCOG. And Sentinel initially stealing Megatronus's TCOG in order to get his alt mode that we see in the film. And then D16 stealing it again. It is a twice stolen TCOG to make the men, the evil men that they become. And of course, I have to mention the parallel between when Orion gets in front of Sentinel to block Megatron's blow and how it exactly parallels. We, we see the foreshadowing for that back during the fight with the high command base thing and how we see the parallel between him jumping in front of Alita to make sure that she's okay to save her. And we see that paralleled in this scene. Oh my God, I literally can't. <laughs> oh, I love this movie. It's parallel. Parallels are gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. God, oh my God. And even after Orion Pax comes back as Optimus, it is still a, a gorgeous fight scene. Uh, another thing that I've also heard from the fan base who have seen this film so far is that the fight scenes are really creative and I absolutely agree. The fight scenes are so creative. There's one scene where Optimus, Orion Pax at that point in time, uh, literally uses his alt mode in order to tear a mech in half. It's so creative, it's so good, it's brutal. The fight scenes are so good and the final fight scene between now dubbed Megatron and Optimus Prime is stunning. I, I love the, the way that Optimus uses Megatron's cannons against him and literally tears them off him. Another thing about this this movie before before I get into the rest of the scene is that it didn't hold back on being brutal at points like there wasn't like energon spilled or anything like their version of blood but like it was brutal people are torn in two you literally see characters die on screen fuck <laughs> I I love that this film in spite of its nature didn't hold back I absolutely adore it and I appreciate that so much because that made this film so much more impactful to me and it really helped to sell a lot of especially Megatron's moments because of the brutality of his nature that he becomes just stunning gorgeous I love it 
more of this, please. Th la see, now this is what I mean when I say that I want a darker, more mature Transformers. This is what I mean. TF1 is the perfect example of what I mean by that. It still has some of that brutality. It still has some mature kind of themes and topics to it, but it's not just dark and gritty and boring like something like War for Cybertron was. God, that series sucked. <laughs> TF1 balances the humor, its brightness, it, it's still like fun camaraderie and character interactions and moments so well with that brutality. I think it balances this, that really well. My bad balances all of that really well. And I know there's probably definitely going to be people who will say, oh, but tonally that's weird. And I'm like, it's not though. It's truly not though. Just have fun with it. Maybe suspend your disbelief for like two seconds. I kind of hate people who like, because I feel like some people when they say that, anyways, this is me getting a little off topic, but I feel like some people when they say that, oh, there's, it's tonally kind of weird. E.g. a lot of people complain about Centaur World due to it's like tonal shift in, in nature due to and this is spoilers for centaur world but the shift between the real world and centaur world and all that in my opinion that's what makes the show centaur world it's it's supposed to have that grittiness that snap to it it's it's supposed to have that tonal shift because that's the point you're seeing these two worlds that are so completely different come into being and come into become one i i personally love centaur world and that's where i'm like i don't think you get the point of this show <laughs> there, there are points like that where i'm like this is where i think that you don't understand it <laughs> you don't understand it like i do anyways again my opinion but that bothers me a bit <laughs> But I know there will definitely probably be people who are like, tonally, that's a little weird. And I don't care. I thought it was perfect. It was great. It was fun. And that's what matters most. It was fun. Anyways, really rounding back to the main point I was originally talking about. I'm so sorry. I'm going to gabble, 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 gabble about this movie forever. But the fight scene was just so creative, so stunning. I love whenever Megatron uses his legs and transforms his tank treads in order to like kick them or kick people away from him. I, I thought that that was really creative. I absolutely adore that. And the fact that the fight ends with Optimus finding out he can he has an axe now finding out that he has an axe that the Matrix has given him and uses it to tear Megatron's cannon in half oh my god it was such a good fight it was so good <laughs> god holy crap holy crap holy crap and of course the very end of the scene that absolutely broke broke my heart the fact that optimus ends it with you have betrayed cybertron and its citizens and you have betrayed me oh, oh, my makeup heart broke when optimus said that absolutely broke God, this movie truly was, truly did feel, I think it was Keegan-Michael Key or Brian Tyree who said this, but this movie is basically, they said something along the lines of this movie is basically like a breakup. And it really was, God, it really was. They weren't lying. It wasn't just one of those things that the actors said to like get hype about the film. No, they meant it when they said it. And I'm so happy. <laughs> like I'm sad because no, my boys, but I'm happy because yes, we actually got it on screen. <laughs> We finally actually got a full Megop breakup on screen. When I say that this movie was everything that I wanted from a Megop dynamic, I mean that so fucking much. Holy shit. This movie was just uh, amazing. Again, everything that I have been wanting out of a Transformers film for so long and, and done so, so well. Okay, so now that I've gotten that really big scene out of the way and I've gabbled about that scene for a little bit because that was like going to be my main talking point for just ages. Now that I have that out of the way, I think I want to try and go chronologically from start to the finish of the film to try and like organize in my head what I want to say here. So let's get going. Start of the film. What do I like? What did I think was cool? La -da 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 -da. Start of the film. This is where we really get to see Orion's personality come into play and something I also really love about this film is Orion's personality, his character in this film. I love that Orion is a little shithead in this film, that he's a mischievous little shit. He's searching for the, the Matrix. He, he wants to know more about it. He wants to be a hero to help out, to help other people like him. He's, he's very heroic in nature and we get all that from the very 
first scene. It's glorious. I love it so much. And I love this version of Orion. He He's genuinely so entertaining and lovable and, and, and nice and oh, such a good Orion. Like I, I think personally, this is the best Orion that we've ever had. The best Orion. He He's so easily lovable and, and charming as a character. Just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. And he's definitely one of those characters that as the film goes on, you really do root for him in the end. Absolutely you do. Especially with the final fight scene between Megatron and Optimus. I was rooting, like the entire film up until that point, I had been rooting for D16. I was like, yes, go D16. Even when he killed Sentinel, I was like, yes, rip him apart. <laughs> absolutely eviscerate this man even up until that point d16 all the way and then as soon as he became megatron as soon as he killed sentinel i was like oppie all the way oppie all the way let's go optimus let's go let's go he, he's a very very easily lovable character and and that's one of the big big strongest points of this film is how lovable orion pax slash optimus prime is i adored him in this film and that's coming from someone who's more of a megatron girly more than an optimus girly I, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of Optimus, even though I do think he's a really interesting character in certain continuities. Megatron is my ride or die. He will always be my ride or die. But Optimus slash Orion Pax in this film was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I loved him so, so fucking much. And while we're still talking about Orion Pax, we have to, of course, mention his voice actor, Chris Hemsworth. Again, even though I still adamantly believe that Chris Hemsworth should not have been cast in this role, we should have gotten VAs who had already done Optimus or who have been wanting to do Optimus for years in a mainstream movie. We should have gotten an actual voice actor. And I will stay adamant no matter how many praises I give this cast because this cast did do so well, so fucking well. Holy shit, this cast was actually amazing. And that's another really, really strong point of this film is that the cast actually acted this very, very well. And I will get into that a little more in depth in a bit, but I'm still a proponent for we should have had VAs. The VAs always should have been here. Make sure to cast VAs in these, these films. However, Chris Hemsworth did amazing. He, he portrayed Orion Pax slash Optimus Prime so gorgeously in this film absolutely stunning work he was his voice was just so warm and kind and gentle everything that you want out of an optimus prime but still like fun and fun loving just oh god he did really well and i i i have heard that chris hemsworth was i think he was like vocally directed by peter cullen peter cullen gave him pointers and everything to help him really get the voice down and i think that really went a long way to making chris hemsworth's performance this good. Absolutely stunning performance from Chris Hemsworth. Now, again, and this is one of the cons that in spite of that high praise for Chris Hemsworth, there were still points in this film where I could tell he's trying to do an optimist voice and he's sounding a little bit too stoic and he's not giving his voice room enough to emote because uh the scene that really uh had that for me was and it was really the only scene that got to me with his voice was when he's talking to the minor bots after he comes back to Iacon from the surface and it's like hey Sentinel's a bad guy blah 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 join me and you won't have to work anymore and da 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 that that was the one time there were like bits towards the end of that speech where he started like projecting more and it just it kind of fell like ooh you should have had a little more emotion here because Orion's trying to get the rest of the mechs hyped he's trying to get them hyped so they can help defeat Sentinel and everything and it just felt it just felt a little stilted there but otherwise a gorgeous vocal performance from Chris Hemsworth now the first scene that had me dying with laughter the first the first bit that had me dying with laughter that I wasn't expecting to find so freaking funny was of course because we're going chronologically is the scene where Darkwing and his buddy find Orion in the archives which I also do I do kind of love that little nod to archivist Orion the fact that Orion goes into the archives to find information about the matrix I, I do love that that slight little nod to his his archivist background in other contexts 
continuities. I adore that. I really loved that. That was cute. <laughs> but Darkwing finding him and they, they, they start like, oh, boys, oh, gee, uh, I was just got lost, huh? And Darkwing, you know, fucking intimidating him and everything. And he's like, oh, he says something along the lines of, oh, and this mech can't even transform. And then Orion's like, oh, yeah, well, watch this. And he, he starts to do the movements as if he's transforming. And then he just runs. <laughs> it just cuts to him running. <laughs> that every everyone in the theater died laughing when when we um when we went to see this in theaters me and my friends when we saw it in theaters we all we all laughed a lot and then everyone else in the theater was laughing like again this film was like genuinely funny genuinely funny i i do definitely think that the humor was the marvel style of humor was played up in the trailers which didn't help but the, the movie itself is actually genuinely really fun and really funny. Again, it was really good. And that scene, I still laughed the second time around watching that because that shit's so funny. I'm, that's, that's a scene that replays in my head a lot. <laughs> Next funny bit, I really loved when Orion fell through like the, the air duct or whatever it was on the rooftop. Like the, <laughs> the way that they did it made it really unexpected and again, very funny. And how he just so casually falls and then gets straight back up and is like, oh, Energon, hi guys. <laughs> I, I loved that. I loved that. And after he gets on the train and other mechs, like clearly this is something that he has done for and he's known for because you hear mechs on the train going, oh, Orion. It's it's so good. And it's little bits like that that make the world building for this movie and help to build the characters for Orion and D16 really, really well. I absolutely loved that. And again, that was a funny scene. I liked it. <laughs> and I love that at the end of the scene, D16 is the one who saves him and gets his ass out of the fucking bringer oh my lord <laughs> and this is a scene where again the com the camaraderie that i love between d16 and orion in this movie comes to play and it's just a, a, a really cute scene that i loved after they get d16 gets on the train and it's like orion coast is clear and they have a little moment and orion takes out the megatronus prime decal and d16 has a little nerd moment and it's like oh my god megatronus the most powerful prime please that was so cute it was so cute it was so so freaking cute i absolutely adored their camaraderie in this film there were there were so many points in this film that i was just like oh they're best friends and i love them and oh my god which just made that final scene that final scene where d16 lets him fall so much worse that is what made that scene so shocking is all these these little moments that d16 and orion have like this moment where Orion gives him the Megatronus Prime decal because Orion knows how big of a fan of Megatronus he is. Oh my goodness. The way they build this friendship is absolutely gorgeous. I, I love it. They they are really the standout of this film, those two. Also, I just love that they're both huge nerds. They are both giant freaking nerds because you have Orion who's wanting to learn more about the Matrix and wanting to help Sentinel Prime. And then you have D16 who is obsessed with Megatronus Prime and loves to learn about him and absolutely idolizes him oh my god what little nerds they are i adore that dynamic and i love that they're just oh my goodness <laughs> I absolutely adore that. So freaking much. So freaking much. Next thing to mention, there were so many. There were so, so many cameos of other Transformers all throughout this film. Like, for example, which we see in the trailers for TF1, we see, like, during the Icon 5000, we see mechs like Tailgate. We see, I think Powerglide is also in the race. A handful of others are in the race that I can't remember at the moment. But I love that at the end of the Icon 5000, Chromia is the one who wins. I, I love all the little nods to all of the Transformers characters throughout this film. Like e even when we finally meet the High Guard or what becomes the Decepticons, we see mechs like Thundercracker, we see Skywarp, we see Slipstream, we see Powerglide, we see uh, Ramjet. We we see like a lot of those mechs. And it, it, it's really cool because it's one of those things where if you're a seasoned Transformers fan, you will go into this movie pointing at the screen every five seconds because you're like, oh, it's Blorbo! Like at the start of this film, when and Orion and D16 
Queen are on the train together, we see, I believe it's Jazz, RC, and Ironhide in the background, and that's glorious. And after the Icon 5000, we hear over the, I think it's like the intercom or something, we hear Dr. Ratchet, Dr. Ratchet, paging Dr. Ratchet, and ah, it's so good. I think we actually do physically see Ratchet later in the film where Orion comes down to the minor mechs to like tell them, hey, about Sentinel and everything. I think we do see him for a little bit. It's just a bunch of cameos like that that I really, really loved and all, all of me and my friends really appreciated seeing in this film. Just so good, so good. So many little nods like that that also really made this film a really nice watch and even a really good rewatch because you still like notice things as as you rewatch the film. So good, so good. <laughs> also another little Easter egg that was very interesting, which I didn't actually know this even though I've literally watched Transformers Prime. <laughs> even though I've literally watched Transformers Prime, there was actually, I think, I think it's maybe during the scene where Orion Pax becomes Optimus Prime and is given the Matrix of Leadership. I think this plays during that scene. I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on it, but it's the same, it's one of the same themes from Transformers Prime. I can't remember what exactly the theme was called, but it's something like Becoming Prime or something like that. And it's a gorgeous theme. It's a gorgeous theme in TFP and it was gorgeous in this movie. Oh, just hearing the rise of the instruments. Oh gosh, this movie was gorgeous guys. <laughs> I love that the minor backgrounds were kept for both Orion Pax and D16, especially for D16, because I feel like, especially when you're portraying Megatron, that's a very important piece of his characterization and his history that I, I think more people should use and is very important for him because it's used in so many of the continuities that him that have written him really, really well or that he's like known for, for example. Actually, was he a minor in G1? I don't remember. I might be misremembering because I'm thinking of like the fan fiction victory condition. <laughs> I'm thinking of victory victory condition. Everything comes back around to victory condition. <laughs> but we see that in IDW. TFP, I think it might be insinuated that he would have been beforehand, but, but we do see it in certain continuities. And those are some of my favorite continuities with my favorite characterizations of Megatron. Just, oh my gosh. And I love that they kept that in. Uh, and even for Orion, I, I adore that because even with their mining backgrounds, we see throughout this film, how that builds their character and everything like what morals they believe in. For example, Orion, while he, um, he loves working with his friends and everything, he knows that there's something else up, you can tell. And, and I really love that because it really builds up the the reveal to Sentinel, realizing Sentinel is a dick bag. <laughs> and his kind of turning point is done really well with that since we already see at the very beginning that he's already kind of suspicious anyways. So it's not the biggest surprise, like it's still shocking because even in the scene where that's revealed, he, he literally falls to his knees. And I love that bit of animation that was done. I'm, I'm so happy he like fell to his knees. Again, there's a lot of non-verbal physical things that they do that really get across the emotions that these characters are experiencing and or the journey that they are going through and I, I adore that and d16 is like he's our rule follower which i think is was an interesting take as much as i love this d16 this megatron i thought that was very interesting and it did initially make me a bit suspicious as to how they would make that work with how who dick d16 i was about to call him dick <laughs> with who D16 becomes in the future. I, I was like, oh, how are they gonna do this if he's like a little rules follower? Because like, you know, in, in almost every other continuity, he has never been a rules follower. D16 slash Megatronus slash Megatron, whatever he is called in whatever continuity, has usually always been the one known for breaking the rules, for not following anyone, not being told what to do. It's the same in IDW, it's the same in TFP, it's the same in G1. It is the same in almost every other continuity. So I was really wondering how they were going to handle that and I do have more to say about that later because while I do think D16 slash Megatron is written gorgeously in this film I don't think it's perfect and there were points in this movie where I was like mm, I feel like this could have been done a little differently to really sell it more again still really well written but bits here and there where it's just like oh that fell a little bit less flat, a little more flat than it could have been. 
But as I was saying, D16, he's very much like that stoic little rules follower. You got to follow the rules because one day you're you're eventually going to get promoted and you're going to get everything that you have been working so hard for. And um, that that kind of build up of their characters is, is done so nicely through through things like that. I, I really love that. And of course, we get to see Alita, the Miss Ma'am. Again, I, I think personally that her character was just, and it's kind of the nature again of the film, but her, her character is just like, again, it fell a little flat with me as much as I love a girl boss it does tend to lack a bit of pizzazz I think Scarlett Johansson did a pretty good job voicing Alita overall though I, I did really like her voice she did a wonderful job with the character she was given she had quite a few lines that were very funny like when she's giving Orion her little pep talk and she's like okay here's something you need to know I'm better than you <laughs> me, me and my friends all busted out laughing at that line that that, that was oh Alita <laughs> and personally while this wasn't a scene that made me laugh all that much my other friends found this hilarious was after the mine starts to collapse and D16 and Orion save Jazz from the cave-in uh, also Jazz 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 mention it's also the first time that we see Orion like physically see Orion actually putting himself at risk to save someone else it's the first time we start to see that self-sacrificial nature come into play but the moment where Orion says what are they gonna do fire you and then power glide whatever the fuck his name no wait darkwing my bad where darkwing appears and immediately is like a little one you're fired <laughs> It, it's funnier on, that bit was funnier to me on the second watch than it was on the first watch good good little bit poor poor alita <laughs> alita one survived which i was really happy with because that was something i was really scared about because i had heard other transformers fans thinking because alita has died in other continuities many other continuities she has been introduced and then she gets killed somehow alita actually made it through this entire movie scott fucking free thank god <laughs> For example, like exactly what they did with Air Razor and fucking Rise of the Beast. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to make my video on Rise of the Beast because I, I, oh, that that was one of my big problems with Rise of the Beast was Air Razor's death. And again, I'll go more into depth in that in the proper video for it. But just, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. But TF1, I feel a hundred percent lived up to the hype and surpassed it. And I really truly hope if you haven't seen the movie yet and you plan to go and see it, I truly hope that it does live up to the hype that I, I'm talking about in this video. I really truly hope it does because oh my gosh, go watch the movie. <laughs> uh, and this is like a little thing from the end credit song, If I Fall. Wonderful song, by the way. Holy shit. Such a good song, especially hearing it right at the end of the movie after you're still like taking in the effects of the scene where D16 shoots Orion, taking in that scene, taking in what's happened, and then hearing the lyrics. And if I so happen to fall, I hope you're right there to catch me. Oh! <laughs> But there's one line and it's during the like bridge verse, I think, where the dude is rapping like, I'm in my prime, Optimus, I'm going big, Megatron. And then they get a line for Bumblebee. So I was like, oh, cool. They're going to do a line for Alita. They, they didn't do a line for Alita. I was really expecting a line for Alita. Thank you, Transformers. Once again, shirking our female characters. <laughs> I love Transformers, but God damn it, you know? <laughs> and it's a wonderful song. It really is. Just just needs a line for Alita. Bumblebee gets a line. If it had just been Optimus and Megatron, that would have been understandable because it's basically a movie about those two. But Bumblebee got a line and Alita's in the main crew. Why doesn't she get a line? Anyways. <laughs> And during the Icon 5000, the many times that both Orion and D16 like hand in hand save each other, metaphorically and literally save each other in the race, please. Orion picking up D16 after he takes a really heavy fall and hurts himself and, and helping him to the finish line, please. Oh my God, that, that did my little mega part in. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Also the scene where they actually arrive at the icon 5000 and orion takes them up to like the big screen and everything and d16 is like you did this for me and orion's like no i did it for us oh my god i cannot take these two verbally edging each other <laughs> please i can't take another movie of this just kiss already anyways like i said there's so much megop content in this film i got fed 
Holy shit, 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 holy shit. Anyways, Heathers. Um <laughs> And has anyone seen that 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 uh that Star Scream Seekers uh Heather's animatic? Absolutely go watch it if you haven't. That's a gorgeous animatic. Anyways, back on topic. <laughs> also, as much as I despise John Hamm as a person cuz John Hamm is I have learned shit about him and now I'm like, "Oh, fuck you actually. He's not a good person like at all. He's a really shithole of a person." However, he did a wonderful job as Sentinel, which I think might also be reflective of him as a person. <laughs> half joking, only half joking. But John Hamm did a absolutely phenomenal Sentinel and really got across the kind of like, I guess, like Hades. He kind of had the vibe of like Hades from Hercules where he's still kind of like fun loving and a fun villain, but like he's also got like, like, and this is, mm, I should say this is unlike Hades. He also has darkness to him and I, I loved that. Sentinel was a really good villain in this film and John Hamm did a wonderful job performing him, even though I literally hate to say that because John Hamm is a horrible person. But Sentinel was such a fun character and a fun villain because he was so fun and evil and just didn't give two shits. Also, I have been loving the people. <laughs> I love the fans who have been making copious amounts of fan art and edits for Sentinel. I love it so much. It's, it's one, it's funny. It's funny because like, you know, it's that uh, self-awareness of like, oh my God, this is the villain, but he's hot. <laughs> and it's also like, I understand. I, I get it. I'm personally not really a Sentinel fan girly. However, it, especially in series like TFA, I really like his character and I like the the villain he becomes or antagonist he becomes in whatever media he's in. Sentinel is a really cool character in that sense. But I, I have very much been being well fed with the fan art and the edits. I have been loving it. Please do more. And of course there have been edits with that one scene where Sentinel gets all strapped up by the fucking Quintessin. Please. <laughs> We, we knew there was going to be fan art about that. We, we all knew. We all knew there were going to be edits. There were going to be fan art. It's, yep. <laughs> also, Arachnid was pretty freaking cool in this film. I really, really loved her and how kind of like creepy and as Orion Pax called it, intense she was. I really, really loved that. I love the, the many, many eyes that she has and how that's literally used to become Sentinel's downfall because she can see everything. I adore adored that. I absolutely adored that. I thought that was such a smart way to use this character's like power against them and to use it to further the story. Adored that. I absolutely adored that. That was really fun. Now getting into B because we're again, I'm trying to go chronologically. I'm really trying here. So getting into B again, like I said in the spoiler free review, I actually wound up liking him a lot more than I thought I would. I thought he was fairly entertaining, fairly fun. I've also been seeing videos of Keegan-Michael Key like d doing his like voice work for the animated little things that they've been doing on like TikTok for, for Transformers 1, which has been silly. I, I actually kind of like them. They're, they're silly, they're goofy. Ugh, capitalism working, God damn it. But Keegan-Michael Key, which was also really interesting to learn that Keegan-Michael Key was a big Transformers fan as well, which was really cool. I, I kind of really loved seeing him just absolutely info dump about Bumblebee and Megatron and shit. That was so fun to watch. I was like, oh, this is why you're Bumblebee. I understand now. And I'm and I'm very glad that Keegan-Michael Key got to play Bumblebee because uh, honestly, I, I think he was a pretty good Bumblebee. He was fun. He was silly. He was entertaining. The Again, not all of Bumblebee's bits and pieces land, e.g. the, the scene with, oh, my Steve. <laughs> that landed a little more on the second watch for me. Oh no, my Steve. But it, it was still entertaining and it did didn't absolutely make me hate him as a character and didn't make me hate the style of humor or anything. Again, I think it's a pretty good win when a character didn't absolutely grind my gears. I, I did quite like Bumblebee and actually the scene where he got his knife hands as it says in the trailer but then in the movie they say sword hands which I thought was a little weird but whatever. That was actually a really fun scene because it was a very climactic moment because you know D-16 had just been like scarred and everything and kind of saved by Orion from Sentinel and everything so it's kind of this moment where a lot is happening and then suddenly we're panning to B and he you know protects himself because he's about to get hit or shot and then his faceplate comes up and he's like oh I have a mask oh my god 
and you you yourself as like an audience member are kind of like excited along with me because you're like oh this is the scene yes like the trailer but it's also like oh that's so cool because now he gets to use knife hands and and again the, the fight scenes are done really really well so whenever he uses the knife hands it looks really cool it's done really well it's animated very well it's super fun b was a lot of fun and the scene, like I like I mentioned in the non-spoiler spoiler review, the scene that actually really got me with Bumblebee was not the first Badassatron scene where he's like, I, I've been thinking of a new name and it's something like Badassatron. But it was the second where he's with Alita after they have just come to the surface and everything. And he's like, oh yeah, you know, I I, I have a name and everything. It's Badassatron. And then, and then there's like a moment of silence and then he does it again. And then there's another moment of silence and he does it again. <laughs> That actually did get me. I thought that was hilarious. I was like, oh, that's a gorgeous use of quiet. Also, this film used its quiet moments so well, so, so well. One, not only just because of the humor to make the jokes land, but another thing that I think made TF1 really strong is that it used its quiet moments well, and it actually used quiet moments to further what it was saying or trying to do in order to make something more impactful. And more movies nowadays, in my opinion, need to do that, which was something I was afraid that TF1 was going to do, was going to fall into the pit of, oh, we need to say something at all points in time in order to acknowledge how fucking weird this is and make it a joke. Not everything needs to be a fucking joke. <laughs> I hate that, especially because this is like, a, again, this is very much that Marvel style of humor where everything needs to be a joke because superheroes are silly, right? So we need to like admit that because we've been doing that for like 10, 15 films now. So we might as well just keep it going. It's not like it's tiring or anything. Again, I was so scared that TF1 was gonna fall into that pit hole and not just let moments be quiet and let moments be funny, but they did. And I'm so grateful for that. Thank God, because especially in the, the first few moments, the first scene that we have with D16 and Orion, where Orion gives him the Megatronus Prime decal and everything. And they just have like this, this moment of silence between each other to, to take it in, to take in their friendship, to take in their, their relationship, to take in the moment that's just happened. They let that be quiet for a moment. And I adored that, whether that's to make it a little more awkward or to really get across that these two who are indeed good friends to allow a moment of silence like this pass without griping at each other. I adore that shit. And again, like in this scene with Bumblebee where he's the doing the bad astron thing, I think that's used really well. And I think that's what makes this scene even, even funnier than I was expecting it to be because the, that quiet moment is used really well. You can't hear anything that Alita is saying. She's not saying anything in that moment. And I think D16 and Orion are like talking in the background, but you can't hear them. So the quiet is used so, so well. And I'll get on to another moment a little bit later after I finish this this scene that I'm talking about that I think quiet is used very well in, but we'll get onto that in a little bit. So one final thing about this particular scene, you know, with the badass Tron and everything, I really love, I really love that you can see D16 and Orion in the background, like talking to each other and Orion kind of like waits back for D16 to catch up and, and make sure that he's okay. I adored that. I was more than I was watching Bumblebee and Alita. I was watching D16 and Orion in the background of that particular shot. I was like, oh my God, they really are best friends. And again, it's little things like that, nonverbal things that you see like that, that's like, oh, you can really tell that they were so, so close to one another. And then everything came crashing down. <laughs> oh, I love my boys so much. <laughs> Also, the scene where they finally reach the surface and everything like we saw in the trailer was just as stunning. Holy crap, it was so stunning. Again, I love how vibrant this film wound up being and I'm so glad that it, its color really did pop out really nicely from whatever was desaturated, like the more natural scenery and everything. Just, oh, the color of the sky as you see the sun in the sky setting and oh my God. Gosh, and the pop of color from the, our main crew, Alita, Bumblebee, Orion, D16. That was that was gorgeous. Just absolutely stunning. I we literally heard people in the audience like gasping, like, oh, 
Oh my gosh. Also another thing about like the environment as well, which was also something that that made us all me and my friends go, oh, 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 was those those little like deer creatures when they because they have these little like antler headlight things and they all tur started turning red and we were all like, oh, 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 that's cool. We just thought that was cool. That was just a cool thing. That, that was cool. I, I really love when like Cybertronian versions of nature and flora and fauna are used. I adore that shit every single time. Bless our conceptual artists who worked on this film and made it into what it is now because holy shit oh my god i love artists i love being an artist i love supporting artists i love art oh my gosh alpha tryon was actually really cool even though he did wind up having a much smaller role than i thought he was going to have in this film oh my gosh alpha tryon wound up being so cool and it's not just because lawrence fishburne did an absolutely fantastic job as uh, alpha tryon I, I thought he did a wonderful performance and it sounded so perfect for alpha tryon but the thing that got me and my friends that made us all again go oh, was when he transformed into his alt mode and beat those quintessence to a pulp that was so freaking cool i absolutely loved that and how how like chill he looks and how like kind of cocky he looks as he says that one line not old enough for you please i know i absolutely know i absolutely know somebody's gonna make a thirst trap edit with that specific line all about alpha tryon i already know Oh, that's coming because somebody has to come on the lines right there go do it <laughs> But Alpha Tryon was really, really cool. And I absolutely adored his alt mode. His alt mode was really cool. I don't quite know what it is. It's like a unicorn. It might actually be, I, <laughs> I initially thought it was like a unicorn, but I was like, no, it can't be a unicorn. So maybe it's like meant to be something like a rhinoceros or something like that. But it, it was, oh, it was cool. I don't know what it is, but it was freaking cool. <laughs> this is also the first movie that we've had like all of the primes here, like all 13. I believe they used all 13 of the primes, like Solace, Megatronus, Alpha Trion, uh, Zeta, Prima. Fuck. Oh my god, they, they had all of them. Megatronus looked really really cool it was also really interesting to learn that the trailer the trailer where d16 is looking at what we know now is megatronus's mask it was also really interesting to learn that oh that was megatronus and it's it's not tarn or something like i definitely knew from the trailer that oh this is going to be something like it's either tarn-esque or it's it's something to do with like an ancient battle where there were like what i was thinking is like there were going to be like ancient decepticon soldiers or something like that but but that that also makes a lot of sense and I think works really well, especially because D16 is such a little nerd. I love him. It, it worked really, really well. The the scene with the primes and learning about Sentinel as well was also just visually stunning with like kind of the sandy texture and nature that Alpha Trion was like using. That, that was such a cool sequence. And again, a very brutal sequence because again, we, we kind of a little bit, a little bit off screen, we see Sentinel kill Megatronus. And that's also when we see D16 really start to go down the path that he goes down. Oh gosh. Again, the facial animations in this scene for D16 are stunning and tell you all you need to know of what D16 is thinking as you see his face. That That's all you need to see. You don't need to hear what he says. You just look at his face and you know you know he's unraveling shit in his head and he's angry and i oh i love it so much and of course i have to mention the titular line no i want to kill him fuck when that scene started, when when D16 and initially started his, his ramble and was like, oh, Sentinel's such a fucking shithead and everything. And Orion's like, hey, calm down. Oh my gosh, what the fuck? <laughs> I didn't think, again, I didn't think that this movie was gonna go as dark as it did, but I'm so happy that it did because I think, again, that really helps make it impactful. That really helps it hit. Like I physically felt that in my core when D16 said, said that line i was like oh, we we all gasped we were all dead silent after that line the, the theater was silent i also of course have to give props to brian tyree henry for his gorgeous performance as d16 slash megatron oh my god brian tyree was amazing he was my highlight for this film i think brian tyree did megatron so much justice he did a wonderful job at portraying d16 as this warmer and kinder individual who's simply trying to make his way in in the world in a place where he doesn't want to be but he 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 wants to be more he wants to he wants to get that promotion he wants to go up a rank he 
once more. I, I really, really adored D16 when he was kinder and gentler and friendlier, but I also loved seeing his fall from grace and I loved Brian Tyree's performance as he gets darker and darker and darker. Brian Tyree did such an amazing job portraying that vocally just oh my gosh and of course with the line I want to kill him but it was something like I want to string him up in the streets and watch him die in darkness something like that it just god so powerful and it was delivered absolutely spectacularly and again I have to mention the scene where D16 shoots around and then attempts to save him and Brian Tyree's performance there was just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal phenomenal he is able to display and perform D16's anger and and just oh so well so freaking well I adored Brian Tyree as my favorite fucking character he did amazing absolutely blew it out of the park. And along the same lines, the scene where D16 has his first kill shortly after getting their tea cogs and he's laughing, not out of joy, but it's like a crazy laugh. It's like, oh my God, ha, 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 my whole world has changed in the span of like an hour. Gorgeous. Oh my God, the fact that that is vocally so well done and again seen really well on the facial animation but also with how brian tyree did his vocal performance oh gorgeous fuck absolutely gorgeous i actually do wonder if brian tyree didn't get any like vocal vocal training or direction from frank welker at all i i would hope they would have given brian tyree some time with frank welker as well because th that that would be really cool and i think that would just be another testament to how good brian tyree's voice work and as as this character became or honestly even if he did it all himself and didn't have anything from frank welker holy crap my guy <laughs> And of course, I have to mention the scene where he goes after Starscream, absolutely eggs that man on. Oh my God, that scene was intense. Me, me and my friends were all talking about this, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like that scene was just intense. That fight between Megatron and Starscream, which in, in my opinion, that honestly sets up their relationship really, really well for if we get future films with these two, it sets up their relationship really well. I really like what they did with what becomes of the Decepticons were originally the high guard for the primes and everything that, cause that sets it up really well since Starscream was already in a leadership position to begin with. And then Megatron was the one who came in and usurped him. That makes so much sense to build up to why Starscream wants to become leader of the Decepticons. Such good building work right there. Absolutely adore it. Very well done. And of course, fucking, I love some fucked up toxic yaoi. <laughs> And Steve Buscemi, while I wasn't excited to hear his voice as Starscream, because honestly, Steve Buscemi would have been one of the last people I would think of to cast as Starscream. However, Steve Buscemi did a spectacular job. Holy crap. <laughs> He got that Starscream voice down so well and did a wonderful job at portraying his kind of like backstabbing nature just in his voice alone. So freaking good. Oh my God. Props to Steve Buscemi. Bless. I, I can't wait to hear more of him. Hopefully if we get a future movie for TF1. God, please let there be a sequel to this movie. A reminder to go watch this film. Go watch this film. Go support it. Please God, I want another sequel. And of course we get to see Shockwave and Soundwave and they were cool. Shockwave Shockwave, ironically, was hilarious. The Shockwave, the usually unemotional bastard. So funny in this movie. Shockwave had some of the funniest fucking lines in this movie. For example, the, the very first scene that we see Shockwave and Soundwave in, and B's attempting to speak, but he has some kind of like metal plate on his, on his face because Shockwave says he wouldn't stop talking. <laughs> And then B ripping off the plate and Shockwave's like, I told you it wasn't tight enough. Oh my God, please. I, I love when Shockwave is like a silly little guy. I do truly love that version of Shockwave as much as and as interesting as a darker version of Shockwave is like in a, the IDW comics and it's TFP and in TFA to some extent. I love when he's a silly guy. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The other two Shockwave lines that were really funny, which had both me and my friends when we went to see it busting out laughing was when Alita punches him after the Decepticon base gets attacked. High command base, not Decepticons. They're not Decepticons yet. <laughs> 
But when the high command base gets attacked and, you know, Optimus is trying to gather everyone together and is like, we need to fight together in order to defeat Sentinel and da 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 da. And Shockwave initially is like, oh, he says something and then Alita like punches him and Shockwave's like, oh, oh, you punched me in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty soon after that, again, Optimus is like, you need to follow me and da 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 da, I will lead you and da. And Shockwave's like, we will never follow you. And then all Alita has to do is, is punch her fist, punch her fist together. And Shockwave's like, we will follow you. <laughs> That man is terrified, and I love it. More, more women intimidating men, please. What a girl boss. Love you, Alita. <laughs> Another bit of the scene where Megatron and Starscream have like just had their fight. One, Starscream gets his vocal cords fucked up, which is how he kind of starts to get his really weird voice. I love that. That's glorious. We love to see it. And also the scene right after High Command has basically accepted Megatron kind of as their like pseudo leader. The, the scene where everything slows, which I think I might have mentioned this before, where everything slows and Orion looks to D-16 as his eyes darken, as they become redder and redder, and we're getting closer to the true red that Megs' eyes become. What a gorgeous scene. Yeah, I think I, I think I have mentioned it before, but I had to mention it again because it's it's just, oh, it's so good. It's so good. What what a gorgeous, gorgeous way to, to get that character journey down. Just heartbreaking and and powerful and oh and again this is another scene where things kind of go quiet for a little bit and I really feel that helps ride home and makes the scene so impactful again because the quiet is used in order to make it punchier I adore it we're almost there we're almost at the end I swear just a little bit more rambling from me and then we're done but me and my friends we were all so freaking excited when we finally see Orion going down to the minor mechs once he makes it back to icon to defeat sentinel and try and convince them that hey dude's evil help <laughs> <laughs> the the scene where he punches that one I think it's Darkwing actually I think it might be Darkwing who he punches finally Darkwing gets some comeuppance <laughs> And then we see truly how big Orion has become now that he has a T-Cog next to all of the other minor mechs who do not have their T-Cogs right now. Just, oh, I love that and seeing like the, the scale difference, but also it's such an emotional impact because Orion literally has to get down on one knee in order to actually look them eye to eye. And the thing is, I love that he actually goes out of his way to bend the knee to look them in the eye so he know so they, they can see that he sees every single one of them on equal playing ground. I adore that. And again, that's a wonderful nonverbal way to get across Optimus's character, who he becomes as Optimus Prime. I love that. And the scene that got me, and this was the first scene that really almost started to make me shed tears while I was definitely sobbing. It was more of like a dry sob. The scene where after Bumblebee, Starscream, Megatron, and all that have been captured by Sentinel and his gang, and they're taken back to his palace of sorts. And D-16 literally stands up to him. He stands when everyone else is kneeling. Oh my God. Oh my God. That scene was so, so powerful again, because it really Really got across like his character because again Megatron has always been the type to never do what people tell him especially as especially when it is someone who deems himself as like a, a higher caste or of a higher hierarchy than him. God, it was so powerful. So, so powerful. And it almost made me cry again, dry sobbing because I was like, oh my God, he's doing it. He's standing up to him. And, and that even in spite after Sentinel literally carves the Megatronus Prime insignia into his chest even after that he still gets back up god <laughs> again this movie is the one i've been waiting for because that's what i love about megatron that is what i love about d16 he keeps getting back up what is that one line from the, the g1 movie that that i've heard that i i've seen in, in in transformers exodus it's it's so good and i especially love how it's used in transformers exodus because whereas in the movie it's used because starscream's like killing and <laughs> trying to kill him off and everything but in transformers exodus and this is what more so why i love this line it's i believe it's i still function 
that line is so powerful in Transformers Exodus because in Transformers Exodus, he's saying it after like he's he's just had this big battle in in the Kaon fighter rings, and I think it's he says that like right after he's won a battle, and and he he's got the crowd roaring around him, and he's like, I still function. Oh, it's it's that same exact feeling in in that scene with Megatron and Sentinel. He still functions. He will not stop so long as he still functions. I I I love him so fucking much. Again, god, it's so emotional. I love him. I love a character who doesn't fucking give up no matter what. No matter what you fucking do to them, no matter what horrors you put them through, they will not stop. Arr, even if this character does become a villain in the end, I, ad oh, I adore it so much. I adore it. I love him so dearly. <laughs> and of course, the line, the line that Orion says to him, don't be like Sentinel. Wh whatever the line specifically was, but it was basically saying that. Don't be like Sentinel. The fact that Megatron does parallel Sentinel basically exactly becoming almost exactly like him takes out his anger and his need for something more on the people that that made him who he is that he loved god oh i oh this movie's so good <laughs> there's a reason that I think this is the best Transformers film that we have had ever and I say that having watched Bumblebee and Bumblebee is a good fucking movie by the way you should also watch Bumblebee but TF1 holy shit holy shit the bar is up in the sky it's up in the sky <laughs> and the second scene the second scene that made me dry sob like I've already mentioned is of course the scene where D16 shoots Orion but the scene that made me fully cry my my eyes brought me to tears the second time viewing it around was the final the final scene that they show towards the end of the movie after Optimus has just banished Megatron from Icon and and it shows them when they first met D16 and Orion when they first met when they were then they were new when they were newly friends and when they were just becoming friends and we see them smile so sweetly at each other and D16 also has such a cute fucking smile by the way oh my god <laughs> The fact that that scene shows right after that battle too, I think is what really makes it hit home and make it so, it so punchy and impactful. I, I was very, very tearful. And of course, I love the very final like shot that we have of all of the Autobots running on the surface together and they all have their T-Cogs so they all look shiny and polished and new. And, and Orion, now dubbed Optimus Prime, goes, I am Optimus Prime. Oh, please. And of course, I have to mention the the end credit scene with the Decepticons, the Megatron finally making the Decepticons, calling everyone Decepticons because Sentinel deceived them. So now they shall be the ones deceiving. I adore that so much. Oh my gosh. Gosh, I can't believe actually, because you know, we see shots from that in the, we saw shots from that in the trailer, like the bit where we're looking up at Megatron's face and it's like kind of got this red lighting. I'm surprised that that was an end credit scene, but I'm not complaining. The end credit scene was still really cool and also because my my friend Jamie mentioned this but the fact that the Decepticons have the symbol that was carved into Megatron's chest so in a sense it is Megatron doing to them what Sentinel did to him oh just oh my heart Megatron is such a tragic villain absolutely tragic villain and such was written so well in this movie so so well I love D16 I love Megatron I love him so much now that I've gotten all of my like positives out of the way and everything and I've gotten like the big big things that I wanted to say I just have a few more and this is where we get to the cons of this movie this is where we get to the cons or more so my big con of this movie and again I don't think that these cons outweigh like the overall enjoyment of this movie no because the overall enjoyment was it was fun it was funny it was heartbreaking the characters were well written overall but the other character that I think did have writing problems surprisingly I think I mentioned this before as well is d16 I do think there are moments with d16 that fall a little more flat than they should for example when d16 takes the map from Orion and is like I got this 
that was a bit disharmonious disharmonious for me that that didn't quite gel for me and I think that's because there's not enough setup in the film to why he becomes a leader or if he even had leadership potential to begin with because all that we know from what we've seen of D16 at least at the start of the film and everything we never really see him with leadership potential we always see him as like a follower he has followed Sentinel and those rules and the rules in the mines his whole entire life he's not a rule breaker he's not known for that which I think is also another like dissonant point with D16's character the fact that he was such a hardcore rules follower and then suddenly kind of almost out almost ish out of the blue however I do think this is still somewhat justified with how his character is written and handled it's almost out of the blue to suddenly see him so angry about this and suddenly so ready to break the rules it, it definitely does feel a little bit dissonant and I do think there could have been something done there to help get across that oh he's not completely a rules follower for example like what they did with Orion where he's already kind of suspicious of like what the heck is happening with the matrix of leadership I feel like we definitely could have had something like that with D16 where we are shown that he's not just like yes he wants to follow the rules but there's something holding him back he's still like a little bit suspicious whereas we don't get that in the movie and I think that's the big problem for a lot of people when they go and see this film for the few people who haven't really enjoyed this film that's that's a really big problem that I've seen is that people have a problem with that particular bit of characterization for D16 and I do think it's warranted because even I had a bit of a problem with this even though I do think he is still in spite of it genuinely well written I do think that is a flaw and it there could have been something else to be like shown or non-verbally shown to show how D16 is somewhat suspicious to make that choice of him becoming super angry and a rule breaker to make more sense and again I feel there could have been more done with making him feel like a leader type personality again because he's always been a follower this whole time and we never really throughout the movie see him as leadership potential up until he learns this stuff about sentinel and then he just takes lead anyways which again i even still kind of think that this is semi justified because as we see pretty shortly after megatron takes the map from orion and orion's like hey d um what the heck's going on you're a little high strung right now and then d16 goes on to say that i can't trust any other mech than like i can't trust leaders i can't trust primes i can't trust any other mech then and i kind of love that he gets cut off because that particular line is is kind of left up to audience interpretation of who he was going to say because my initial thought with knowing who D16 is in this movie is that he was going to say himself. He was going to say himself, I am the only one that I can trust, that kind of thing. However, it could be he could only trust Orion. It's another way that that line could have possibly been played out had he been able to say the full line. Also, because I think that would be so much more heartbreaking if he was going to say Orion instead of himself. But I think he probably would have said himself. And even if we go down the line of he said himself, that makes sense for him setting himself up in this leadership position because he believes he is the only one that he himself can trust. He can only trust himself because this other leader who he put all of his faith and trust in failed him absolutely failed him so he's now the only one he can trust because he doesn't trust anyone anymore i i still think with that line there it still somewhat makes sense i still think it's like a little bit not not necessarily lazy but like there could have probably been a better way to like show that lead up to get to that point point. and it's the same with him kind of being so angry about this as well and again this is the point where i think that his anger at the very least is well justified to me his leadership potential i think definitely is still a major issue but his anger i think is still somewhat justified but I've seen comments on TikTok where people are like, I, I adore the tragedy of D16's character because he is a man who dedicated himself entirely to this cause only to be completely let down. And that is why he's so angry. And it's a gorgeous way to represent that. And I personally agree with that because again, and this is going into kind of like the, the anti-capitalism themes of Megatron and everything. When, when you are someone who has dedicated yourself to a system that does not serve you and once you realize that you you do become angry you become angry you're like why is the world the way that it is why are you like this why did you do this I understand his anger and that's what I love about Megatron I understand his anger I understand where it comes from it, it comes from feeling cheated like you're cheated out of your own fucking life out of what you could have been 
I understand his anger. And I think that that aspect, even if the leadership potential isn't written well, his anger is, and it's justifiable, even if some people disagree and think that it was a little out of the blue. I don't think so personally. I think that that was still very, very well done, but I still, but again, I still do think there probably could have been something earlier on to show that he has anger issues of some kind. Again, showing some kind of suspicion about the nature of Sentinel Prime's quests or about the nature of this government system and everything, I think there could have been more done there. However, still written very well. And I think other than Orion is one of the best written characters in this film, hands down. I adore D16 in spite of his flaws. Hey, Future Jack's back again. So this is my amendment to this particular section with D16 and kind of some of the cons that I talked about here. And the specific amendment that I kind of want to make is, which I kind of justified in this portion of the review, about how D16's whole quick jump to anger and wanting to lead and not trusting anyone, how that felt kind of like, oh, kind of out of the blue. This is my kind of amendment to that. And after like talking with my wonderful friend, Jamie, my wonderful friend Jamie struggling to adult on places like TikTok and Instagram. She pointed this out and I just think it's like an extra lens and perspective that whether or not that's like what the writers of this movie intended for this to be interpreted as and whether it's not really that deep, I do think it adds an additional layer onto D16's character that might help to justify why exactly that turning point feels so quick and sudden. But as I said, my friend Jamie pointed out that D16 actually projects a lot on Orion throughout the movie. And what I mean by that when I say it is that, one, it's not just in reference to D sees Orion as another sentinel, as somebody trying to keep him down. It's not just that, but it's even to an extent where the only thing that D is thinking about is himself. He is being selfish in his motivations because the thing that has driven him throughout the entire film and what drives him to this snapping point after discovering this stuff about Sentinel is that he feels betrayed. He feels personally betrayed. Whereas we see mechs like Alita, B, and Orion who are thinking of the wider Cybertron, the wider society of Cybertron, and are like, we as a society were betrayed by Sentinel. So we need to figure out how to combat this in order to help us and our people. Whereas when we get that scene with all four of them after Alpha Trion tells them about Sentinel's betrayal, D is the only one in that scene thinking he betrayed me. He lied to my face. Like those are the lines. And I just think that adds on another layer that is very like subtle with how D16 character is written because yes while the turning point can feel very sudden and this is also like bringing back in kind of the micro expressions and the facial animation of this movie if you pay attention to a lot of those again non-verbal things happening the snap doesn't feel so sudden it doesn't feel like it's so suddenly so out of the blue after you've watched the movie like a few times over and realized oh this was more likely a long time coming because and this is another point that my friend also pointed out and this is also a problem that a lot of people have had with the film is that there's actually not a lot of points where D actually saves Orion and here's where I come in with what my friend Jamie said and where I think this is actually really well justified again if this was the intention of the the writers for this film again it could just be looking a bit too deep into it because we've me and all my friends have seen this movie way too many times now but I think it's really cool to look at it in this perspective. D hasn't actually saved Orion that many times. If anything, it's actually Orion doing a lot of the saving. And at first, this might seem like a flaw of the story. I initially thought that as well, but honestly, I've kind of really been leaning into this as, as my friend described this. But that might be the point. The fact that D thought he was doing so many things because he felt that he had a right and a he that he like deserved the stuff that he got in his life or more from his life. He feels like he deserved more for all the effort that he was putting in, whether that was actually there or not. Which honestly, I think just plays really, really well into becoming who he is then 
as Megatron because Megatron, as we know, is a man who is driven by power. He is driven by power by getting the things that he wants in life that he could never have. So when you combine all that together and you you see kind of almost how truly selfish D is in a way, I feel like this really justifies what might have been a flaw, e.g. E D not saving Orion enough to justify him saying, I'm done saving you at the end of the film. And might explain why that snapping moment was so quick because suddenly this is all caving in on him in that moment that, oh my god, everything that I feel that I have deserved up until this point has been for nothing. All of the effort that I have put in has been for nothing because they betrayed me. Sentinel betrayed me personally. And I think honestly that even adds to the scene where literally Orion and D16 do actually physically meet Sentinel after the Icon 5000. That just makes that even more like bitter, that scene even more bitter because it it adds that extra layer onto why D probably also feels so personally betrayed by Sentinel because he actually did meet him and Sentinel was like oh you and Orion can go talk to the minor mechs and da 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 and I love that again whether that's looking a little too deep into it but I I do think it's worth like having a think about having a think about something like that and and looking at that a little more in depth a little more hard even though some people might still think it's a flaw and might not not think that that's the case but I think this is a perspective that we need to think about <laughs> but I will let uh my past recording self get back to it that's really all I wanted to say on this <laughs> but I think that that is everything that I've been wanting to say for the last week <laughs> I adored this movie and another reminder to please, please, please go see this movie in theaters. Please go see it. Go support it. Show it some love. Show your love online. Show your love to the creators, to the artists, to the actors who played this. And oh, please make fan art. Make your edits. Make sure that people know about this film. Make sure you show your love for this film. It is so, so good. Genuinely an amazing film film and I think for me personally it's going to be one of my like top 10 films in in my little list in my head it's absolutely going to be in my top 10. Now I don't have any commentary about the speed paint today because as the time as at the time of recording this I haven't actually chosen what speed paint I've put on this video yet so I hope you all have enjoyed the speed paint <laughs> whatever it is oh my gosh wow look at that cool art holy wow that's cool which means no speed paint commentary today but that's okay because I think oh gosh at the time of recording this this thing's currently a little over two hours now so this will probably be edited down to like hour and a half maybe <laughs> so i hope y'all enjoy the long ramble and also can geek out about transformers one with me again please go see the film if you haven't please 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 god go see the film if you haven't you've just been spoiled for the entire film if you or if you've watched this far in please go watch it watch it anyways even if you've been spoiled i i think you'd still enjoy it even with the spoilers i think you would still enjoy it but that is all from me i hope you guys are having a good day and remember if not I am sending you spoons. Till all are one and peace through tyranny. Bye.